Even a bad movie brings out their best. And my mother had a nerve to think that you would do a better job than me. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 British performances that were better than the film. If your faith in our power has faltered, let me renew it. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're ranking performances by British actors that stood out from otherwise poor or mediocre films, with the movie's success judged on its box office sales as well as its critical and audience reception. Why don't you say something? Why don't you tell me this? Number 10, Michael Sheen, Tron Legacy. The son of Flynn. Of all the innumerable possibilities, he has to walk into mine. This sequel to the 1982 film Tron received mixed reviews, with critics praising its visual effects while criticizing its story and cast performance. Sheen, though, received universal acclaim for his portrayal of the flamboyant club owner, Castor. Libations for everybody! Sheen said he drew inspiration for the role from Mae West, Tim Curry, and particularly British music legend David Bowie. Electrify the boys and girls if you'd be so kind. His camp theatrics add a much needed dose of humor to a film that often takes itself too seriously. This is going to be quite a ride. Number 9, Andrea Riseborough, Brighton Rock. Nothing, nothing's the matter, Miss Arnold. I just. I'm sorry to hear about your friend, that's all. The 1948 version of Graham Greene's novel is widely considered one of the best British films of all time. The 2010 remake, eh, not so much. Mr. Corkery has been complaining. Helen Mirren and Andy Serkis do give excellent performances, but Riseborough is the highlight of the film, playing a naive young waitress drawn into a gangland lifestyle. Is this him? Wasn't wearing me glasses. She skillfully moves her character from bumbling infatuation to suicidal devotion in a display that earned her two BIFA award nominations. It's just too bad that the film wasn't of comparable quality. All right, no need to get agitated. Number eight, Mark Rylance, the BFG. Spielberg's adaptation of Roald Dahl's novel was one of 2016's biggest box office flops with The Hollywood Reporter magazine claiming it could cost Disney up to $100 million. There ain't no place to go unless you has wings. Critics were generally kind to the film, but generally underwhelmed, except when it came to Rylance, who received plaudits for his portrayal of the lovable title character, The Big Friendly Giant. He was human being, and human being is like straw bunkles and cream to those giants out there. Motion capture tech can often obscure an actor's performance, but not so with Oscar-winning Rylance, whose work has been likened to that of Andy Serkis as Gollum in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. He dropped it in giant country. Number seven, Tim Roth, Planet of the Apes. A trade. Is that what you're proposing? Yourself for the humans? Even when you were a child, you took in stray humans. Your family indulged your every whim. While Rupert, Wyatt and Matt Reeves gave new life to this beloved franchise with their rebooted trilogy, Tim Burton's early 2001 attempt wasn't nearly as successful. The director brought style to this updated vision of a planet ruled by apes, but audiences were left scratching their heads at the bizarre twist ending, and critics were generally unimpressed. Roth, however, makes it with a watch. This one looked at me. In the film, he plays the ape antagonist General Thade, managing to convey extreme, dangerous intelligence with authentic animalistic movements, and his dedicated performance was rightfully praised. I will hunt him down myself. Number six, Michael Goch, Batman and Robin. Often regarded as the worst Batman film ever made, this movie's negative reception was so severe that Warner Bros. opted to cancel a sequel and reboot the series. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! While Arnold Schwarzenegger left us cold with his barrage of shockingly bad puns, and the rest of the cast similarly phoning it in, 
Go proved the film's one redeeming feature with his warm and dignified portrayal of Batman's butler, Alfred. Do try and bring this one back in one piece, sir. He even provides us with one of the franchise's most poignant moments as he offers this insight to his troubled master. But what is Batman? if not an effort to master the chaos that sweeps our world. Number 5 Ewan McGregor Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones Here, but it isn't. Gravity is pulling all the stars in the area towards this spot. Opinion on the Star Wars prequels may vary, but few would contest that they don't hold up to the original trilogy. And the less said about sand, the better. I don't like sand. Whilst Hayden Christensen earned a Razzie for his performance as Anakin Skywalker, two aspects of the film drew particular praise. The fact that Jar Jar Binks received limited screen time, and the superb performance of McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Come to your senses! What do you think Padme would do with she in your position? Though also often lumbered with clunky dialogue, he still manages to lift the franchise with characteristic style and wit. You wanna buy some death sticks? You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't wanna sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. <laughs> Number 4 Paul Bettany The Da Vinci Code You are a sister of the church. And yet you serve them. The adaptation of Dan Brown's best selling novel was almost universally slammed by critics with most reviews labeling it a letdown. May the peace of the Lord be with you. But Bettany was one of the few actors to emerge with his reputation unscathed, thanks to his portrayal of the murderous, self-flagellating monk Silas. Amidst the senseless puzzles and predictable car chases, he delivers a character who is both genuinely creepy and yet strangely sympathetic. Number 3 Naomi Watts Shut In I don't know what's worse, either either this really is happening or I'm losing my mind. Watts once revealed that she doesn't watch her own films, and perhaps it is just as well in this case. I know. The approval rating for Shut In on review website Rotten Tomatoes is an eye-watering 8%, with critics dismissing it as blandly generic and achingly inept. I feel like I'm losing my mind. A trained method actress, Watts is wasted on this paper-thin role of a grieving child psychiatrist, but she still gives it her all. It's a stirring and forceful performance of a woman who is genuinely concerned over the fate of a missing young boy. I'm sorry, I really can't talk right now. I'm gonna have to call you back. Mary? Number 2 Alan Rickman Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves For many, this is a guilty pleasure film but critics generally panned it for offering a violent and depressing take on the classic story. I'm gonna cut your heart out with a spoon! Then it begins. Whilst Kevin Costner spent the film trying to make a questionable version of the famed Archer seem interesting, Rickman won a BAFTA for his delightfully wicked portrayal of the Sheriff of Nottingham. Cancel the kitchen scraps for lepers and orphans. No more merciful beheadings. <laughs> and call off Christmas. Later, Rickman admitted to rewriting some of the character's lines with the help of friends, most notably this exchange with two women in Nottingham Castle. You, my room, 10.30 tonight. You, 10.45, bring a friend. Number one, Tim Curry, It. Excuse me, sir. Do you have Prince Albert in a can? You do? Well, you better let the poor guy out. Yeah, <laughs> 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 my <laughs> hand. Okay, technically this was a TV miniseries at first, but it qualifies because it was subsequently repackaged and sold as a movie on VHS and DVD. Aren't you gonna say hello? Stephen King's It is a horror classic, but this adaptation suffered from some wooden acting as well as an ending that even Curry described as hugely disappointing. Do you still think you can see me? Curry, though, delivers one of the best horror performances of all time as Pennywise, the sinister clown who knows your every fear. Indeed, he was so frightening in character that he reportedly even scared some of the child actors on set. Low down. They all flow down here. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.